All right, here's our next example. As you can see, uh, again, we're trying to factor. The first step of factoring is to factor out a common factor. Let me show you how important this is, because if I look at this problem right here and I try to factor it as a difference of squares, and look at this term right here and say, is that a perfect square? The answer would be no. Is this a perfect square? The answer would be no. So one of the reasons it's important to factor out the common factor first is because it opens up some doors that may not have been opened before. When you notice there's a common factor of 2, you divide both the terms by 2, and you end up with x squared minus 4. Now that may be the only factoring that we can do, but as I look at this, I recognize this is nonlinear. So I have to see if I can factor this. Since it's quadratic, I would look and say, well, there are two terms. Can I factor a two-term polynomial? Yes. The only way I know how is difference of squares. This has to be a perfect square. This has to be a perfect square and a minus sign in between. All of my things on my checklist work out. Take the square root of this to get the first term of the binomials. Take the square root of this to get the second term. And my two binomials have to be conjugates of each other. These are both linear, so therefore I'm uh, finished factoring. Now this 2 is important to us because it is one of our building blocks. If we don't include that and we just put our answer as these two things, then these two things will multiply to give me this, but this is not the same as this. So when you factor out this 2, it's still part of your answer. Don't make it just disappear. Because this times this is this, negative 2x, positive 2x will cancel. This times this is negative 4. But then 2 times this is this, and then 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So if you factor something out, make sure it stays in your problem all the way to the end. Here's another example. Uh, like I said before, when I'm factoring, I do not like to factor when my leading coefficient is negative. Anytime that's the case, what I will do instead is I will factor out that negative. So when I factor out the negative, I divide both my terms by negative 1. It leaves me x to the fourth minus 1. Uh, that's the only common factor is that negative 1 there. So I'm going to go ahead and try to factor this. Difference of squares. Perfect square here, perfect square here, minus sign in between. Works for me. Uh, when I factor this, I get x squared. So the square root of this term is x squared. Square root of 1 is 1. Make sure you know that. And then one has to be a plus one, and the other one has to be a minus one, so conjugates of each other. Now, as you can see, neither of my factors are linear, so I need to try to factor those. So this is binomial. This is a binomial. Both of them are quadratic. Uh, this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. But this is a plus sign, so I cannot do difference of squares whenever I have a plus sign in there. However, this is actually difference of squares. So the first one will not factor. There is no sum of squares. But this one is factorable. So I'll get, a, again, a binomial times a binomial. So be aware of this because a lot of times, especially on quizzes, I'll give you uh, polynomials that have multiple steps in terms of their factoring. But that is the factored form. And again, I can build it back. This times this will give me this. Multiply these two together, it gives me this. Distribute the negative, and it gives me my original polynomial. So be aware of that. Always try to factor out the common factor first. Make sure you factor out a negative leading coefficient because it will make your factor easy, easier. And make sure once you've factored once that you look and make sure you can't factor again.